Welcome to Leader Lessons Now podcast with weekly conversations on leadership lessons for new leaders to develop their self-awareness and help those they lead to a better future. Now, here's your host. Welcome back. We are into chapter four, Lyndon Johnson. And he was known as a steam engine in pants. So... I think he was trying to capture the drive of Lyndon Johnson. And interestingly, probably tied to his early beginnings with his relationship with his mom. But his household was different than Franklin Roosevelt, where it was very balanced and allowed uh, Franklin to have this demeanor that was uh, calm and level. And then you get with Lyndon Johnson and his family household was filled with severe tensions, which contributed to his excitable temperament. So it was that temperament that, you know, attracted some people and that he was dynamic and dashing kind of a, you know, it's this flash of a continuous drive. And then, you know, you build devotion with him. But if you crossed him or, if you weren't that same type of person, then you lost his devotion. And this was a similar relationship he had, he had with his mother. Rebecca Johnson was kind of an intellectual. She had ideas and wanted to do more. Um, we had a culture of books and intellectual discussions, philosophy and literature. But when she married Sam Johnson, he was kind of part of the political crony, uh, political cronies, drinking beer, sharing gossip, swapping stories. So these ideals came from his mother, whereas these sort of backhand, you know, get the job done, uh, rebuking others came from his father. And it was that kind of dynamic that added at the tension of his, of his household. And so here's his mother, Rebecca, you know, now drawing water from the well, feeding chickens, boiling clothes, scrubbing floors on her hands and knees, and and really, I think, kind of depressed with the situation. So she came to terms with it by investing in her son and allowing her son to learn poetry, re, uh, recite long passages at a young age. But But these ambitions were so great that it, I think it may have been overwhelming for Lyndon So he became a bit sluggish as a student and resisted continuing the violin and dancing lessons. And then she would withdraw her love and affection as sort of a consequence. And it was that sort of tension with his mother that seems to persist through his life in that he was always trying to get the attention or love of others. And he was getting that, try to try to get it for himself by showing that he can achieve the next thing and kept pushing himself uh, really to almost unhealthy extremes. Uh, but likewise, you know, if somebody didn't meet that same standard, then they could be feel, they could feel betrayed by him because he would withdraw his affection or devotion to, to them like his mother did to him. So far, all four leaders have had this heroic conception of leadership and were extravagant uh, or uh, storytellers. And that's, and that's a pretty cool lesson, I think, so far, in that storytelling is a way of teaching others that attracts them to the central message and attracts them to you as well. So I thought that, that was interesting. But this ambition of Lyndon Johnson was about getting close to those that are the head of things. So he wasn't, he wasn't the most like physical energy driven, you know, sort of building of the body like Abraham or he, you know, and he wasn't this congeal, um, you know, laid back, uh, leader like Franklin. And then he didn't have this, this kind of, uh, intrinsic motivation of intellectual kind of, uh, capacity like Theodore to pick up things quickly. But what he did have was getting close to people of power and doing whatever it took to influence those people to be a part of it and then to become powerful. But that thirst for power is 
you know, he, he was blind to, and he could fail to understand when to ease up and was often blind to the collateral cost of his compulsive energies. And that, and that's interesting because, because then you have sort of a polarized view if you've worked with him, which was, uh, I love it. He challenged me, great mentor set, you know, allowed me to do things that I didn't think were possible. And then you would also have kind of like, uh, shunned me and I don't think highly of him at all. So you, you had to kind of choose one of those sides because he chose one of those sides and, and, and how he responded to you. There are some hints though, that he begins to mature and learn from that. In his year, he spent teaching the Mexican American children in Catalua. It was a pivotal experience for him and that he was able to display a different kind of leadership one that was based on empathy and generosity that he had never exercised before. So another, another kind of similarity here, uh, in, in the lives of the Roosevelt's was, you know, this sort of extremely aggressive kind of getting out there ambition, um, can, you know, can backfire at some point there where you have to go back and reflect and start to get closer to the people from an empathetic point of view and understand, uh, and meet people where they are. But Lyndon Johnson could smell power, he insisted on perfection, and he wanted absolute 100% loyalty and, and, do, and would do whatever it takes in order to get that. It was said of him that he could never unwind and that, you know, in many times the price for admission into his circle was, was, uh, was the sort of dedication and unquestioned loyalty to devouring all of the subordinates' personal time and space. And it was that type of commitment and devotion that he was expecting from you and in turn would repay uh, sort of his, his love. So the key lesson here about Lyndon Johnson is he had these high expectations. He pushed people. They were rewarded with his love. But what kept them... Uh, close to him and what kept a strong team around him was that he was always the first to arrive and always the last to leave. And that's where this sort of one side story of success for him is that he put everything into it. And what it doesn't talk about is maybe the sacrifices that were made personally with personal relationships, because obviously he had to sacrifice time there in order to dive himself fully into the work he was doing. So this was a pretty long chapter. There was quite a bit of um, history here about his rise into power, some of the positions he's taken and some of the um, bills and and other uh, things he stood for. Uh, but but I liked it. It was a good uh, closure to our first part, and we're moving into our second part, which is again these four men when it comes to it, uh, adversity and growth. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Leader Lessons Now. Check back weekly for new episodes, and please subscribe to this channel if you want to stay updated on the latest leadership lessons.